All right, so I'm going to show you how to work the I cord bind off using brioche stitches. Okay, so you might already be familiar with the I cord bind off as just a great bind off to use with shawls. And it's especially good for brioche shawls because it's super stretchy. Okay, but for this pattern, I actually wanted to work the bind off with the brioche stitches instead of working, you know, kind of omitting the brioche stitches and working it with single stitches. I wanted the bind off to be right up against the brioche without single stitches in between, like, any, you know, stock a net in between. So I'm going to show you how to kind of start this off and then I'll show you how to kind of work the bind off for the remainder of the shawl. So let's say you're working with some yarn and you just want to use this yarn, the same yarn that you were just working with for your I cord bind off. So how you're going to start is you're going to cast on three stitches. So you want three brand new stitches using the knitted cast on and I'll show you how to do that. My shawl is really big. <laughs> so you're going to put your needle in as if to knit the first stitch, okay? So this is the first stitch is a single stitch. So I'm gonna put my needle in as if to knit and I'm gonna knit one, but I'm, I'm not gonna pull this stitch off of the left hand needle because I'm casting on this new stitch. So I'm gonna place it on my left hand needle by kind of twisting it back. So that's one. I'm going to do that two more times. New stitch, two, new stitch, three. Okay, so kind of think about these three new stitches as the beginning of your I cord. So now what I want to do is I'm going to knit these first two stitches just normally, and then I'm gonna knit these two together through the back loop. So that doing that is what binds off the stitches, right? So I'm gonna knit two, and now I have these two stitches. So this stitch is the first stitch that we cast on for the I cord, and this stitch right here, that was the first stitch of our actual shawl, okay? So as we knit these two together through the back loops, that's going to be binding off one stitch. And knitting them together through the back loops kind of helps them to lay correctly. So I put my needle in as if to knit through both of the back loops, and I'm going to knit those two together. Okay, so those first three cast on stitches, that's the only time that you need to do that. And if you want to, you know, if you want to bring in a contrast color, you can cast on your new stitches using a completely new yarn. So then you would just leave a tail for weaving in. So let's undo these. Okay. So I just undid that. Let's say I want to break my working yarn, which I'm not going to do in real life because I'm actually going to continue working on this shawl. But let's say I want to bring in a contrast color for my bind off. So what you would do is just work the knitted cast on using your new yarn. So kind of leave a tail for weaving in later. So then you would cast on one two, three. Okay, so that's kind of your new, you know, your I cord. And then you would just work exactly what I did before. So you would knit two, and then knit two together through the back loop. 
okay? So I'm gonna, so now what you wanna do is slip these three stitches back to your left hand needle, okay? And you wanna slip them purl wise, right? Because you don't wanna twist them. So now the working yarn is here. And by continuing what we just did, you're going to be creating that I cord edge. Now we have, so we have the three stitches that are part of the I cord. And now we're at a brioche stitch. So you might not be able to tell because it's kind of hard from the front. It looks kind of like two stitches, but it's actually one brioche stitch. So you can see here's the yarn over wrapping the slip stitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to knit two, similar to what we did before. And I'm going to do the same thing. I want to knit this stitch and this brioche stitch together through the back loop. So I'm going to put my needle in as if to knit this single stitch and this brioche stitch. Okay, so you want to make sure your needle goes through the slipped stitch and the yarn over of the brioche stitch, okay? And you'll knit those two together through the back loops. So it's going to kind of twist your brioche stitch in an interesting way so you can kind of see the little yarn overs poking out. Well, that's completely intentional. I experimented a lot with this and I really love the way that it looks. So that's just my own personal preference. So I'm gonna continue this on um, my small version. This is a large version that I'm actually still working on. And I'm working I'm working this bind off. Um, I actually kind of stopped in the middle of it. Let me get this messiness out of the way before I. So yeah, you can see that I that I started it here on my small version. So I'm kind of calling this my beetle juicy shawl because it's got black and white stripes, and then I'm doing this sort of acid green. So you can see I brought in a completely new and different color for the bind off for this one. So you can kind of see, this is what my edge looks like where I cast on those stitches. It's very clean and it will look even cleaner once I weave in all of my ends. Okay, so I'm gonna continue with this one. So I just slipped my three stitches back to my left hand needle even the small is really big. <laughs> Am I right? So I'm going to knit two. And here I have a single stitch on the shawl. So I'm going to knit two together through the back loop. So it's just two single stitches. Because, you know, with brioche, every other stitch is a brioche stitch. So I'm going to slip those back knit two, then I have a single stitch here for the I cord and I have a brioche stitch. So see again, it looks like two stitches, but if you turn it around to the back, you can see that it's a brioche stitch. So you wanna put your needle in as if to knit through the back loops, the single stitch and the brioche stitch. Remember to grab that yarn over with it knit them together through the back loops. So you can see how seamless it is. I, I just, I love how stretchy it is with the brioche. You know, that's so important. And I just love the way that it looks on both sides. It looks, it looks very, very good. So yeah, you'll just continue that until you get to the end. And I will meet you back here to show you what to do with the final stitches of your shawl.
moment, I have come to um, just the last few stitches of my shawl. As you can see, I have worked the I-cord bind off all the way across. And you can see how close it is to the brioche stitches. I just love the way that looks so much. Like there's no gap in between. Like if you had worked um, just stockinette or, you know, omitted the brioche stitches and then just had plain knit stitches, you would have a bit of a gap, which I think also looks cool. I think this just depends on, you know, the look that you want. So I just love how close it is and how it just, it looks amazing on both sides. So I'm just gonna work these last few stitches. Okay, so here are the three stitches of my I cord. And then I have one, two, three stitches left on my shawl. So this is a brioche stitch right here. So I basically just want to work this, knit two, knit two together through the back loop until all that's left on my left hand needle is the I cord. And then we'll sort of decrease the I cord away. Okay, so the last stitch, knit two together through the back loop, slip these three stitches to my left hand needle. So now all that's left are the three stitches of the I cord, okay? So I'm just gonna knit one and then knit two together through the back loop. slip these two stitches back to my left hand needle and knit them both together through the back loop. Okay. And now we'll just take our working yarn here. I'm just going to break it if I can. I'm just actually going to cut it. Sometimes yarn is really hard to break and it hurts my hands. All right. So now I'm just going to take my yarn through the final loop, pull it through. And then now when we weave in this end, we can kind of close this up a little bit. So when you weave in the end, this is the main side. So when you weave in the end, you'll want to weave it in to kind of close that gap because it's kind of sticking out a little bit. So then when you weave it in, you'll just kind of close it up in the back. So kind of weave it in on itself. Does that make sense? All right. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. Um, you know, working this bind off with brioche stitches. It's, a, you know, kind of similar to working it with knit stitches, but it's just a little tricky sometimes with that brioche stitch. So thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to ask me any questions and I'll see you later.